Alright guys, I'm recording this on my phone because it's the future and also because I'm not at home, so I hope this works. Um, anyway, here we go. Here's your first response video to H.P. Lovecraft's The Music of Eric Zahn. And again, it's Hannah who leads us off. Um, she says that this is like a list of Lovecraft's favorite, least favorite things jammed into the first few paragraphs of the story. Bad smells, deteriorated houses, and poor people. Can we put this to the tune of my favorite things? Uh, working on it, I guess? Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Maybe that's why it's my favorite Lovecraft short story, or I mean, they're basically all short stories, but it's my favorite very short story. Um, no, I, I adore it, and it is. It's so encapsulating of Lovecraft, which is kind of another reason that I wanted to use it as a demonstrative one instead of like the Call of Cthulhu or something like that. I feel like it's a lot easier to relate to and to get everything out of after just one reading. Um, she goes on to say she went back and reread the story, and it's a perfect example of the unsatisfying sat satisfaction to be found in H.P. Lovecraft stories. And what she means by that is you never really know what happened. Like, you don't know if this was all actually happening, if it was in Eric Zahn's head, if it was in the narrator's head, if, if it never happened at all, or if it did actually occur. And yeah... You don't know what happened, and at the same time, it's completely satisfying, it's completely compelling, and you just want to read it over and over again. She says there's no resolution, there's no answer, there's not even a beastie. There's just darkness and cold air and a weird dude that might possibly be a non-Parisian cityscape of some sort out the window. Yes, exactly, there's all this imagery and weirdness and everything, and there's absolutely no explanation for any of it. Um, she says to finish her previous thought prior to H.P. Lovecraft, and she's somewhat generalizing here, there was plenty of weird genre fiction and lots of it was popular and successful, but there was always an answer. There's always an explanation of some kind or a clear resolution to the end of the story. Dracula is stake, the mummy is returned to the tomb, the woman in white has her legal case resolved, the jewel is found. <laughs> Yes, exactly. There often is no resolution in H.P. Lovecraft, and I feel like that's a modernist thing. Um, going back to our previous video with T.S. Eliot, again, there's almost no resolution, and I feel like even Ezra Pound, things like that, there's often no... Th I mean, there's a definite ending, he says, and I'm summing this up here, blah 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 blah. Um, I didn't read the end, but that's basically how it ends. Um, it doesn't... there's no satisfaction um and to me okay here's my thought life kind of doesn't have a resolution not that way at least i mean everybody dies um but you don't get like one glorious you know you don't you're not beautifully made up and the camera's on you and the lighting is perfect and all the questions are answered and then you die no you just kind of die that's the end um, and I feel like stories that don't resolve but definitely end kind of have that going for them. They're much more true to life. I mean, if you were in that position, if you were the narrator in Eric Zahn, or indeed if you were Eric Zahn, and you had no idea whether or not this was true, or if this was in your head, if this was really something that was happening, if this was a hallucination, you, you wouldn't know. Who could you ask? No one was there with you except for possibly that one other person. And, I mean, you can't really corroborate it. You can't disavow. I mean, you really just don't know. Did this happen? Didn't happen? It's all about objective reality. The reality that I see is different than the reality you see, even if you're standing right next to me. And indeed, if you're being told this even first or second hand, or you're seeing it firsthand, or reading an account, a firsthand account, you have to assume, A, that the facts are correct and that they're not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Okay, we've set that aside. This is a short story. We'll take it at face value. There is no resolve. I guess that's like, I just spent a minute saying, congratulations, there's no answer. Um, but yes, that was Hannah's thoughts. Those were my thoughts. Um, it is my very, very favorite Lovecraft short story, so I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I will be doing some other Lovecrafty things with Sinister Dream. Um, we're going to be doing some narrative podcasting, which is to say radio shows, basically. Um, and the one I'm doing is admittedly comic, um, but I hope that if you appreciate Lovecraft and don't take yourself too seriously, this would also be something that you would enjoy. Um, and also, how about this? Miskatonic University Historical Society. That's not a real thing, but this is an awesome shirt. I just wanted to show it off. I wore it specifically for this video. 
Anyway, I'm glad you guys liked it. I don't know what I'm gonna do next time yet. We'll see. Um, Hannah has suggested E.F. Benson, and I'm definitely going to do E.F. Benson. I just need to read up more um, because I don't want to go into an author um, not having any pre-prepared thoughts. I don't just want to do a cold reading and be like, what did you think? I want it to be something that I personally am familiar with, and I'm going to make myself familiar. Um, right now, I'm kind of debating between some poetry, um, and I'm just going to let that hang, uh, and... Arthur Conan Doyle because I could pick any any Sherlock Holmes story and be like I have many feels about this so we'll see maybe maybe we'll get some of the greatest detective of all time or maybe I'll just I don't know read Emily Dickinson for two minutes and see if you guys can extrapolate from a couple of poems um, but yes if you have anything to say about HP Lovecraft please leave your comment in the comments below or as John Green says in the doobly-doo um, and I will happily make a video just to read your comments so that other people can see what you said and I can have a little say so too um, but yeah feel free this is a discussion let's do it and thanks again Hannah you're the best um, there is someone else who's writing an essay I don't want to say who in case it doesn't pull through <laughs> but he's writing an essay about Lovecraft and if he does I will happily read the whole thing for you guys um, so that's something else maybe to look forward to but we'll see enjoy leave your comments and I'll see you next time